वेरी गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू गुड इवनिंग गाइस कैन यू कैन यू प्लीज कंफर्म द ऑडियो एंड वीडियो इज क्लियर टू एवरीवन Can you please confirm the chat box if the audio and video is clear to everyone? Wonderful, wonderful. So let's start the revision of the topic financial instruments. Now, first of all, uh, this is a very, very, very easy topic. Yes, a little bit, a uh, little bit lengthy. Has multiple topics. Has multiple topics, but yes, uh, if you break the chapter into multiple parts, the top each topic is quite easy to understand. Now, so understand uh, this topic covers three standards: IFRS uh, nine, IFRS nine, IFRS seven, and IAS thirty two. First of all, let's understand what exactly is the coverage of each standard. Now, generally, whenever we study any standard, be it property, plan, and equipment, or investment property, or intangible assets, or any other standard. Each standard has three things. Each standard has three things: recognition principle, measurement principle, and disclosures. Right now, in this topic of financial instruments, they are covered under different different standards. Now, IAS thirty two, IAS thirty two talks about the presentation of financial statements. IFRS nine talks about the recognition. and measurement principle of financial instruments and ifrs 7 talks about the disclosures of financial statements or financial instruments disclosures disclosures of financial instruments so this is the coverage of the these three standards now as we know the name is financial instrument so first let's understand what exactly is the meaning of the term financial instruments but before we uh, go to the topic exact topic let me give you brief a uh, few instructions guys uh, the topic financial instruments is uh, is uh, important from an exam perspective so that's the reason why i'm taking it live for you guys okay now understand that uh, if i'm taking it live please make optimum use of it and actively participate in the class okay without any hesitation whether you are right or wrong but take an active participation in the class i hope that is clear to all of you now the meaning of the term financial instruments now as the standard says that financial instruments is a contract it's a to be a contract which gives rise to financial asset for one party financial asset for one party and financial liability or equity instrument for another party let me give you an example of it let's suppose uh, i took a loan from the bank i took a loan from the bank so when i took a loan from the bank it is financial liability for me it is financial liability for me and it is financial asset for the bank it is financial asset for the bank now let me take uh, give you another example let me give you another example now what happens i invested in the equity shares of the bank okay let's suppose it's uh, state bank of india i invested in the equity shares of sbi so again what happens it's a financial asset for me and it's an equity for the bank now what happens uh, in all the cases in all the cases it is a financial asset for one party financial asset for one party and financial liability or an equity instrument for another party just to have an example of it just to give, give you a brief example of it let's suppose this is an entity called reliance and this is a me vj okay now let's suppose reliance issued a uh, reliance issues debentures okay and i invest in the debentures so for me it is a financial asset and the reliance it is a financial liability now what happens reliance issues equity instruments reliance issues equity shares so now when reliance issues equity shares and i invest in the equity shares again for me it is a financial asset for reliance it is an equity for reliance it is an equity right so basically what happens what happens uh, what happens uh, for one party it is a financial liability or equity and for another party it is always a financial asset it is always a financial asset and now when uh, when in contract has these features we say it is a financial instrument now so that's what it says that for uh, one party for one party it is a financial asset and for another party it is a financial liability or an equity instrument i hope that is clear to all of you
Now here we have to understand the meaning of the three terms. Here you have to understand the meaning of the three terms. One is a uh, financial asset, financial liability, and then the uh, comes the equity. So we have to understand the meaning of these three terms. Now understand financial asset as the name itself says asset. I have a right. I have a right. I have a right. I have a right. Okay, asset means I have a right to receive. I have a right to receive. I have a right to receive. Now, this right to receive is coming from this contract. This right to receive is coming from this contract. So, that's why I'm writing here contractual right to receive. A contractual right to receive cash or any other financial assets. Cash or any other financial assets. Now, whenever I have a contractual right to receive the cash or any financial assets, it is called as a financial asset. It is called as a financial asset. Now, this is the meaning of financial asset but now there are two other things which are specifically included which are specifically included uh, in the meaning of financial assets what is it cash and bank cash and bank cash and bank because it is deemed as a financial asset because all the transactions all the monetary transactions happens in the form of cash and hence cash and bank itself is a financial asset now investment in equity instruments of another entity now understand whenever i say contractual right to receive cash or any financial asset it means contractual right to receive fixed amounts of cash or any other financial asset fixed amount of cash or any other financial asset now when it comes to equity when it comes to equity when it comes to equity well, let's suppose I invested in the equity shares of Reliance. It is not. Uh, it is not uh, sure. It is not certain that I will receive a fixed amount of money after a certain period of time, right? It is not certain. It is not certain, right? So what happens? Uh, that's the reason why this is specifically included as part of in financial assets because it was not covered as part of the general definition of financial assets. This is the general definition of financial asset. The contractual right to receive cash or any other financial asset. This is the general definition of financial asset. And these two are specifically included in the definition of financial asset, cash and bank. And these two are, these two are specifically included in the definition of financial asset. Now, coming to financial liability. Now, if finance, if a uh, financial asset is a contractual right, is a contractual right, financial liability is just the reverse of it. It is a contractual obligation. 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 Now, financial asset was a right. Here it is an obligation. Here, uh, there I have to write to receive. Here I have a right to obligation to deliver. Here I have an obligation to deliver. Just the reverse of financial asset. Just the reverse of financial asset. Okay. To deliver what? Cash or any other financial assets. To deliver what? Cash or any other financial assets. So, meaning thereby, so far we understood that financial uh, asset is a contractual right to receive cash or any other financial asset. Uh, financial liability is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or any other financial asset okay now 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 understand what is the meaning of contractual obligation what is the meaning of contractual obligation can i avoid this payment can i avoid this payment come on guys tell me can i avoid this payment what is the meaning of contractual obligation can i avoid this payment no we cannot avoid the payment we cannot avoid the payment right so that's the meaning of contractual obligation now if you see here in equity if you see the meaning of equity if you see the meaning of equity equity means what residual interest in the net assets of the entity after paying off all its liabilities now just after reading this definition do you understand that can i avoid the payment can i avoid this payment now understand that's the basic difference between equity and liability that's the very basic difference between equity and financial liability equity is avoidable equity is avoidable and financial liability is unavoidable and financial liability is unavoidable now understand understand the example of financial liability is a bank loan now tell me in a bank loan let's suppose if i have taken a loan from the bank let's suppose if i have taken a loan from the bank okay now if i take a loan from the bank uh, can i avoid the payment of interest can i avoid the payment of interest no i cannot can i avoid the repayment of a principal amount no i cannot i cannot i, I cannot now let's suppose let's suppose reliance uh, reliance uh, issues equity shares reliance issues equity shares now uh, can reliance avoid the payment of dividend can reliance avoid the payment of dividend yes it is at, it is at the discretion of the reliance 
whether to pay or not to pay the dividend and if it wants to pay the dividend then what amount has to be paid it is at totally at the discretion of the company right he has the company has no obligation to give the dividend or to uh, repay the equity shares okay or to buy back the equity shares there is no obligation for the same okay uh, till the time it is not yet announced okay if it gets announced yes then it becomes an obligation and then the dividend payable is a liability i hope it is clear to everyone till here now again coming to the meaning of financial asset now see there is one line here contractual right contractual right to receive cash or any other financial asset now see here uh, this is same this this point this point and this point is same so far but now here i am writing something else in potentially favorable condition now what happens let what happens now let's suppose uh, two party enter into a contract two party enter into a contract okay two party enter into contract uh, and the contract is uh, whether it will rain or not today if it rains i will give you 100 dollars if it doesn't rain you will give me 100 dollars now in this in this contract one party will win one party will lose one party will win one party will lose now let's suppose for me it is a potentially favorable condition i am expecting that i will win the contract i will win the contract so what will happen in this contract in this in this contract i have a right to receive cash or any other financial assets and hence this also becomes a financial asset but the name of it is called as tell me guys what do, what do we call it as what do we call it as this financial asset is called as what it is called as derivative asset it is called as derivative asset now similarly here in liability also a contractual obligation to deliver cash or any other financial asset in potentially unfavorable condition let me highlight this point unfavorable condition okay and here it is potentially favorable condition favorable means asset and uh, unfavorable means what derivative liability i hope it is clear to everyone till here now i am leaving these three points for the time being this one i have parked for the time being this one i have parked for time being this one i have parked for the time being okay we'll cover we'll cover it now applicability applicability now understand uh this standard of financial instruments is doesn't cover or is not applicable on these particular type of uh these particular type of transactions now though i covered here i specifically wrote here investment in equity instruments of any other entity investment in instrument equity instruments of any other entity is covered as part of financial asset and hence financial instrument is it is a financial instrument and the standard of financial instrument is applicable on those instruments but now see here what i'm writing here this investment in subsidiaries associates or joint ventures investment in subsidiaries associates or joint ventures are kept out of scope why 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 because see understand uh, when you study the chapter of group accounting there we will mention that in the sfs of the parent uh, we we can measure the investment in subsidiaries associates and joint ventures at three uh, using three methods at cost at fair value or at equity method at cost at fair value or at equity method now standard says that if you measure it at cost if you measure it at cost it is kept out of scope it is kept out of scope of the financial instruments and it is covered in the scope of ias 27 okay but when it is at fair value when it is at fair value when it is at fair value it is covered in the scope of ifrs 9 now you must ask me a question sir what if it is at equity method what if it is at equity method then in that case ias 28 gets applicable 28 and ias 27 gets applicable in that case okay now its standard says that rights and obligations under employee benefit plans again this is kept out of scope of financial instruments because if is 19 is applicable insurance contracts again is kept out of scope lease contracts again is kept out of scope okay share based payment award transaction is again kept out of scope indemnification asset is again kept out of scope okay forward agreements for business combination again is out of scope uh, contract asset liabilities under revenue contracts is again kept out of scope why because on these topics on these topic transactions 
स्पेसिफिक स्टैंडर्ड गवर्नस स्पेसिफिक रूल ओवर जनरल रूल स्पेसिफिक रूल ओवर जनरल रूल ओके नाउ सर्टन लोन एंड फाइनेंशियल गारंटीज एंड एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल स्टडी इन डिटेल अबाउट एग्जीक्यूटरी कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ओके नाउ सो दीज आर द ट्रांजेक्शन ऑन विच दीज आर द ट्रांजेक्शन ऑन विच आई एफ आर एस नाइन इज नॉट एप्लीकेबल नाउ कमिंग टू दिस वन हाव एवर हाव एवर दिस स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ आई एफ आर एस नाइन इज एप्लीकेबल टू द फॉलोइंग if the investment I, as i mentioned here right cost and equity is not applicable but if the investment in subsidiary associated or joint venture is measured at fair value is measured at fair value then yes it gets in the scope of ifrs 9 then it gets in the scope of ifrs 9 okay now accounting for lease receivable or lease liabilities now you will ask me sir uh, here you specifically mentioned that lease contracts are kept out of scope then why you are writing here lease receivable and lease liabilities are covered in the scope understand the initial recognition of lease receivables lease liabilities right of use asset is covered under ifrs 16 okay how exactly to measure the same is covered under ifrs 16 because that's a specific provision that's a specific law there's a specific uh, uh, point okay now but subsequently lease receivable is a financial liability lease uh, sorry lease receivable is a financial asset lease liability is a financial liability right so these are covered under ifrs 9 right of use asset gets covered under if ias 16 or 40 okay so subsequently it will get covered but initially it will not get covered okay so the initial treatment of uh, lease receivables and a uh, lease liability is as per ifrs 16 and the subsequent treatment is as per ifrs 9 i hope that is clear to all of you the applicability provisions are clear to all of you now now uh, one more thing let's suppose uh, there is an income tax payable there is an income tax payable tell me is that a financial liability income tax payable is it a financial liability because in income tax liability i have an obligation to pay in cash or any other financial assets right which i cannot avoid so can can i say that it is a financial liability income tax payable come on guys send me income tax payable is that a financial liability the answer is no no why because uh, there is no contract between the general public and the government right so what happens here since there is no contract since there is no contract between the general public and the government hence uh, this is not a contractual obligation this is a statutory obligation this is not a contractual obligation understand we have clearly mentioned that it should be a contractual obligation but the income tax payable or the provident fund payable or any other amount payable to the government is a statutory obligation and there is no contract with the government is not a statutory right or an obligation to receive or pay cash or any other financial asset is not a financial instrument is not a financial instrument now examples of financial assets and liabilities so trade receivable is a financial asset loans given is a financial asset investment in equity shares preference shares or debentures is a financial asset okay property plant and uh, uh, equipment intangible assets investment property tell me is it a financial asset no it is not a financial asset why 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 because there is no contractual right to receive cash understand when i talk about property plant and equipment intangible assets or investment properties we do have a we will generate cash but there is no direct contractual right okay just because i have this laptop with me can i say that i have a right to receive cash no i have to use this laptop and generate the contractual right okay so just because i am having this asset doesn't mean i have a contractual right okay doesn't mean i have a contractual right okay so understand that these assets does not give rise to contractual as right doesn't give rise to contractual right so there is no contractual right and since there is no contractual right this is not a financial asset okay advance given for supply of goods now advance given for supply of goods you have a contractual right okay now with you and the customer okay when you when you give the advance to your customer okay uh, to a supplier basically to a supplier okay uh, when you give the advance to your supplier that's an asset for you that's an asset for you now question is is that a financial asset or not okay let's assess now definitely there will be a contract between you and your supplier and according to the contract only you have given you have given this advance right so there is a contractual right to receive what 
टू रिसीव वॉट टू रिसीव गुड्स to receive goods or services will you receive cash no so even though there is a contractual right but still there is no contractual right to receive cash or other financial asset there is a contractual right to receive goods or services and hence this is also not a financial asset contractual right to receive goods or services and not cash okay now tax refundable is a statutory obligation okay refundable is a statutory right now coming to financial liability trade payables is a financial liability bank loan is a financial liability redeemable preference shares is a financial liability tax liability is not a financial liability why because it is a statutory obligation right now income received in advance income received in advance now tell me what will happen for this one you have received the income in advance you have an obligation to deliver the goods or services you have an obligation to deliver the goods or services though there is a contractual obligation okay now from between you and the customer between you and the customer i have received the money in advance from the customer now tell me what is my obligation my obligation is to deliver the goods or services to the customer not cash right hence this is not a financial liability as there is a contractual obligation to transfer goods or services is it clear everyone hence not a financial liability not a financial liability is it clear everyone till here wonderful wonderful now just give me a minute hmm. you remember in the definition of a financial li uh, financial liability and equity uh, we clearly uh, uh, we uh, basically skipped one definition we one point right let's discuss that now this is a point contract this point we skipped right so now let's discuss this point now what is the meaning of financial liability the standard says that financial liability means the contract that will contract that will or may be settled in entities own equity instruments that are variable in number that are variable in number now understand what is the meaning of this one what is the meaning of this one understand understand so basically what the standard is trying to say okay if you have any if under the contract you have any obligation if under the contract you have any obligation if you under the contract you have any obligation okay and now this obligation is can which has to be settled will or may okay will be settled in equity of my own company will be settled in equity of my own company meaning thereby this this obligation has to be settled by issue of equity shares only by issue of equity shares only and if these equity shares are variable in number if these equity shares are variable in number uh, i am not discussing the reason why specifically but understand if the number of equity shares are variable it will again be financial liability meaning thereby even if i am settling this contract in the form of equity shares still it is a financial liability why 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 because the number of equity shares are variable in number because the number of equity shares are variable in number now second point is may meaning thereby there is no obligation specifically to settle in the equity shares okay if the holders of the instrument asks for cash i can give cash if the holders of the instrument asks for equity shares i can give equity shares now understand being conservative being conservative we understand that if any of the if any of the instrument holder asks for cash can i deny no i cannot deny can i deny no i cannot deny if i cannot deny if i cannot deny meaning thereby i become contractually bound under the contract to repay the same and hence it becomes financial liability right and it becomes, it becomes financial liability now understand the meaning of will is compulsorily convertible to equity the meaning of may is optionally convertible to equity now if it is optionally convertible if it is optionally convertible meaning thereby it is always 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 financial liability if it is optionally convertible it is always 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 financial liability if it is variable now the, the number of shares to be issued is variable in number it is again a financial liability is again a financial liability now you must ask sir then in that in what case it will become equity if the contract will be settled uh, in equity shares compulsorily into fixed number 
and the number of instrument uh, number of equity shares to be issued is fixed it is in this case 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 it will be called as equity it is in this case it will be called as equity now let's come here and read it the definitions contract that will or may be settled in own equity instruments that are variable in number if it is variable in number or if it is or if there is an uh, optionally convertible it will always be financial liability but now read the meaning of equity equity says the contract that will be settled will be settled means what compulsorily convertible in entities own equity instruments that are fixed in number meaning thereby compulsorily convertible and fixed in number then it becomes equity is it clear everyone is it clear everyone wonderful now let's uh, assess this one if i have a contractual obligation it is a financial liability and not an equity it is a financial liability now if there is a contract that will be settled in entities that will be settled in entities own equity instrument okay that are variable in number variable in number variable in number don't apply any other brain it is always financial liability contract that will be settled in entities own equity instruments that are fixed in number that are fixed in number fixed in number means it can be fixed in number means it can be equity it can be equity but now let's read further at an option to the instrument holder means option the instrument holder has an option meaning thereby if the instrument holder has the option and they they come for cash at the time of redemption they come for cash can i deny no if i cannot deny meaning thereby it is a meaning thereby it is a financial liability again right contract that will be settled in entities own equity instrument that are again variable in number financial liability i will not read only okay contract that will be settled in entities own equity instrument that are compulsorily convertible and fixed in number it will be called as equity it will be called as equity so this is the crux of the classification between financial liability and equity instruments i hope that is clear to all of you now moving on to the accounting treatment of financial liability moving on to the accounting treatment of financial liability understand guys <coughs> financial liabilities are measured at amortized cost okay but however there are following financial liabilities which are measured at fvtpl fvtpl okay now let us understand the first the normal financial liabilities and then we'll take up the special cases of financial liabilities going forward now the normal case so understand the financial liabilities can be with transaction cost uh, and with without transaction cost and with transaction cost now what is the meaning of without transaction cost a loan where there is no a, a, li a liability where there is no issue cost or no uh, no basically there is no transaction cost involved basically there is no transaction cost involved okay now in such cases what we'll do you will record the financial liability normally normally basically what you will do you will record the liability you will charge the interest at the coupon rate and you will uh, and you will pay the coupon rates and uh, and basically what we'll do is you will record the closing financial liability simply simple no no challenge here no challenge here okay but if there is any transaction cost involved understand understand if there is any transaction cost involved what happens here let's suppose you have taken a loan of dollar 100000 okay and you have to pay uh, and you have to pay a uh, processing fees of 10% of that okay so let's suppose you have paid a processing fees of 10000 so net net you received how much net net you received how much 90000 right and uh, the, there is an interest of 12% so every year you will pay an amount of 12000 as interest every year you will pay 12000 as interest so now what the standard says is if there is any transaction cost involved if there is any transaction cost involved we have to factor that transaction cost we have to factor the transaction cost in the in the in the interest rate itself in the interest rate itself and it will be called as effective interest rate what was the interest rate 12 percent what was the interest rate 12 percent now if the interest rate is 12 percent and we factor in the we factor in the processing fees of 10 percent the interest the effective interest rate will be something higher than the coupon rate will be something higher than the coupon rate okay so what we record we will record the financial liability at the net amount received that is dollar ninety thousand okay charge finance cost at effective interest rate that is effective interest rate is calculated as 
it is calculated as if internal rate of return where the outflow is equal to inflow okay that is what is the outflow tell me what is the outflows for the next three years uh next three years 12k 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 and 100k repayment of the loan and what is the inflow 90k that i received now 90k that i received now okay so when i calculate when i comes when i calculate the internal rate of return between these two inflows and the outflows that is called as the effective interest rate don't worry we'll take up a question on this and understand it further okay now now let's take up a question on this and understand so it says that uh, x limited has made a borrowing from a bank and a uh, borrowing amount was dollar 20000 okay and the fixed interest rate is 12% per annum fixed interest rate is 12% per annum and the loan is for 2 years the loan is for 2 years okay now further it says that the processing fees of 1000 minus 1000 is the processing fees so what is the net amount received 19k net amount received is 19k okay now it says that uh, the loan is payable in two equal annual installments of 10,000 each. So 10,000 is paid here, 10,000 is paid here. Okay, now plus interest you have to pay. So interest rate is 12%. Okay, now interest rate is 12%. So what is the interest rate here? What is the interest that I'll pay here? 2.4k and 1.2k. Can you please confirm? Is it is it clear, everyone? So this is an outflow. These are outflows. These are my outflows, and this is my inflow. And this is my inflow when you calculate a discount when you calculate a internal rate of return between this inflow and the outflow between this inflow and the outflow the internal rate of return generally will be given in the question this internal rate of return is called as effective interest rate and it is given as 16 percent per annum now see generally the bank charges generally the bank charges a 20 12 percent interest but now i am recording the i will be recording the finance cost at 16 percent why this four percent this four percent extra this four percent extra is an account of processing fees we are amortizing the processing fees of over two years we are amortizing the processing fees over two years is it clear everyone now how will we amortize it how will we amortize this loan so let's prepare amortization table year opening financial liability finance costs uh, payments and closing financial liability year one year two opening financial liability or how much i have received how much Nineteen thousand. i have received how much Nineteen thousand. finance cost i will calculate at the rate of 16 percent so can you please calculate Nineteen thousand into 0 0.16 is 3040 how much i have paid here 12400 so what is the closing financial liability 19000 plus 3040 minus 12400 is 9640 so it is 9640 and the finance cost at the rate of 16% is 1542 right now payment amount is uh, 11200 so what is the balance 9640 plus 1542 minus 11200 is 18 that is on rounding of errors rounding of error okay that you can ignore it off so this is how it will be recorded now this finance cost this finance cost will be recorded in p and l as finance cost now understand what a mistake a student can do is he will say that the interest rate is 12 percent i will uh, i will calculate finance cost at the rate of 12 percentage that is uh, uh that is 12 uh, that is 2400 and 1.2 k no that is wrong that is wrong that is wrong you have to calculate finance cost at the rate of effective interest rate that's what i have mentioned here see that's what I mentioned here. Finance cost you will measure at the discount rate used, which is also called as effective interest rate, which is also called as effective interest rate. Uh, actual payments you will calculate at the coupon rate. Okay. Now closing financial liability opening plus finance cost minus the payments is the closing financial liability. I hope this is clear to all of you. Effective interest rate generally will be given in the question. If it is not given, you can calculate using interpolation method. Okay. Is it clear everyone till here? The accounting treatment of financial liability in the presence of transaction costs. 
So basically what happens the transaction cost gets allocated over the term of the loan by through discount rate through increase in the discount rate we factor in this processing fees in the discount rate itself in the coupon rate itself and we arrive at effective interest rate and we arrive at effective interest rate now if you talk about this uh, journal entries i will record 19k here i will record 19k here and for the next two years one and two i will record how much finance cost i will record 3040 for the year one and 1542 for year two and this much is 12,400 and 11,200. So this will, uh, at the year end one, the balance is 9,640 and in the year end two, it, the balance is nil. So this is how it will get accounted for. Is it clear everyone? Come on guys, tell me, is it clear everyone till here? Now. Anyone having any queries so far? Now comes the compound financial instruments. Now what is the meaning of compound financial instruments? Basically it says that if any instrument, if any instrument has the features of both equity and financial liability if the if any instrument has the features of equity and financial and both equity and financial liability there is and there is an and here there is an and okay and financial liability then we say it as a then we say that instrument as a financial compound financial instrument compound financial instrument okay now the accounting treatment now accounting treatment of compound financial instrument see understand on the date of issue of the instrument when the instrument is issued on the date on that date okay first what we have to do we have to break the instrument into two parts that is equity component and the financial liability component equity component and the financial liability contract uh, com component over the term of the instrument i will continue may, uh, i will do the accounting of equity separately and i will do the accounting of uh, financial liability separately okay then on the settlement date i will settle the transaction how exactly let us understand it so first of all on the date of issue to to segregate the equity and the financial liability component first of all we need to identify first of all we need to identify the fl component and the equity component then we have to measure it off okay first we have i'll identify then we will measure and then we will recognize okay so how to identify now understand in any instrument in the world consider any instrument in the world they will have three components principal component interest or dividend component and the conversion rights conversion rights gives us the right to convert the instrument to equity conversion rights gives us the right to convert the instrument to equity and hence this will always this will always be equity this will always be equity this will always be equity now interest or dividend tell me what was the basic difference between financial liability and equity what was the basic difference the basic difference was in financial liability we have a contractual obligation but in equity there is no such obligation in equity there is no such obligation now understand understand so if there is an interest or dividend what happens generally we think generally we think that Generally, we think that if it is an interest, it is a financial liability. If it is a dividend, it's an equity. No, no, no. Don't go by the legal form of the instrument. Rather, go by the substance. Rather, go by the substance. Going by the substance over form principle. Substance over form. Even though the term given is dividend, still it can be, still it can be, still it can be financial liability. Even though the name is interest, still it can be equity let me give you an example let's suppose uh, uh, i gave a loan uh, let's suppose i took a loan i took a loan from my parent company i took a loan from my parent company okay and the parent company says that vishal whenever if you want to pay the interest pay otherwise if you don't want to pay the interest don't pay okay now see here there is no obligation for me to repay the or to pay the interest to pay the interest so there is no contractual obligation there is no i can avoid the payment since I can avoid the payment, even though the name is interest, it is an equity. It is in the form of equity. It is in the form of equity, right? So that's the that's the in, that's the essence. Now, the, uh, basically, what I, what I what you understand understand here is, if there is a contractual obligation, 
if there is a contractual obligation then it's a financial liability otherwise it's an equity if you have a contractual obligation it's a fl otherwise it's an equity now understand second second principal principal again you have to see for the principal if you have a contractual obligation to repay the principal back to the uh, investor uh, to the in instrument holder in cash in cash in cash then it's a financial liability then it's a financial liability if you have a contractual obligation to repay the to repay the principal back in cash it's a financial liability but if you have a contractual obligation to repay the principal in the form of equity in the form of equity then you have to assess these parameters then you have to assess these parameters convertible to equity and it is compulsorily convertible understand compulsorily convertible now if it is compulsorily convertible what we will see if it is compulsorily convertible compulsory convertible into fixed is equity compulsory convertible into fixed is equity right whenever there is a variable whenever there is a variable number of equity shares it is called as financial liability right now if it is optionally if it is optionally if it is optionally at the holder we will not assess anything else financial liability if it is optionally at the option of the entity now understand understand options if i have the option i am the entity i am the entity i have the option if i want i will give cash if i want i will give you uh, you can say equity now tell me can instrument holder and uh, come and make me bound by any other that no no give me cash only no they cannot they cannot they cannot okay then in that case if it is fixed it is equity is it if it is fixed it is equity otherwise it is a financial liability now if the question is silent that who has the option assume that the holder has the option and it becomes a financial liability now if the question is silent again that uh, it is optionally convertible or compulsory convertible assume it is compulsory uh, assume it is optionally convertible and holder has the option and it is a financial liability is it clear everyone i believe that this chart will uh, help you in understanding or classifying the equity and the financial liability component now with the help of this chart you can identify that which component is a financial liability and which component is an equity component right now once you identify what i told first you have to identify then you have to measure and then you have to recognize now we have identified which one is a financial liability component which one is an equity component now we have to measure the value of financial liability and equity so how will we measure so standard says that when you are measuring when you are measuring you have to measure at the present value of the contractual cash flows you have to calculate the present value of the contractual cash flows you have to uh, calculate the present value of the contractual cash flows contractual cash flows for which component for the financial liability component for the financial liability component okay calculate the present value of the contractual cash flows for the financial liability component okay uh, using 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 market rate of interest for similar instruments without conversion rights now understand since this instrument has conversion rights hence it becomes a compound financial instrument since this instrument has conversion right hence it becomes a compound financial instrument now we are calculating the value of pure financial liability so when i am calculating the value of pure financial liability don't you think i should consider the uh, interest rate also of pure financial liability right so that's what it says the calculate the present value calculate the present value using the market rate of instrument for a market rate of interest for similar instrument without conversion rights that is pure financial liability component what is the interest rate for pure financial liability component consider that discount rate consider that interest rate for calculating the present value of the financial liability now what is the value of equity equity is residual equity is residual here also it will be residual what is the proceeds that you get from the issue of the instrument minus what is the financial liability that you have calculated in step number to the, the the balancing figure is called as equity the balancing figure is called as equity right so this is how i will measure the this is how i will measure the uh, financial liability and equity now comes the question of recognition how will i measure how will i recognize so i will recognize on the date of date of issue is bank account debit to financial liability to equity okay step number 2 step number 3 i hope it is clear to everyone on the accounting treatment on the date of issue of the instrument subsequently 
subsequently what will happen subsequently you will continue measuring the equity at its cost and financial liability at its financial liability will measure at amortized cost financial liability will measure at amortized cost financial liability will measure at amortized cost okay on settlement date on settlement date if you have to settle by issue of equity shares you will issue equity shares and difference if any is treated in securities premium or if it is to settle by is paying cash then pay off cash okay simple simple now now this is the accounting treatment of compound financial instrument now let's take up a question of compound financial instrument with transaction cost involved with transaction cost involved okay let's see this question and try to solve it It says uh, Perfect Limited issued uh, 50,000 compulsory convertible preference shares uh, CCPS as on 1st April uh, 2017 at dollar one eighty each. Okay, the rate of dividend is ten percent payable at the end of each year. The preference shares are convertible into twelve thousand five hundred equity shares at the of the company at the end of the fifth year from the date of allotment. When the CCPS are issued, prevailing market rate of interest without the conversion option is 15% per annum. Transaction cost on the date of issuance is 2% of, uh, of the value of the proceeds. Effective interest rate is 15.86%. Now, what will happen here? First, uh, this is compulsorily convertible preference shares. So, again, three components, principal, interest and conversion rights. Principal, interest and conversion rights. Now let's assess these three components. Conversion right will always be equity. Now see here, this uh, fifty thousand compulsory convertible preference shares on first April two zero x x two zero one seven. Okay, the rate of dividend is ten percent payable at the end of every year. Now see, even if it is even if it is dividend, even if it is dividend, ten percent every year. Meaning thereby there is a contractual obligation. There is a contractual obligation there is a contractual obligation and hence it becomes financial liability now the preference shares are convertible into 12000 equity shares now the principal is compulsorily convertible into fixed number of equity share meaning thereby it is an equity meaning thereby is equity so this is equity this is equity and only this is financial liability only this is financial liability now what will we do we have identified the equity and the financial liability component now we have to measure the value of equity and the financial liability now how will we measure that so let's uh, calculate uh, year uh, contractual cash flows uh, present value at the rate of present value at the rate of what is the market rate of interest without similar without conversion rights that is 15% per annum so present value at the rate of 15% okay now so year how many years it is convertible when at the end of fifth year so first year second year third year fourth year fifth year now what is the principal amount 50000 uh, at 180 each is 90000 90000 and the discount uh, coupon rate is 10% is 9000 Right. So, uh, present value at the rate of fifteen percent. Can you please calculate and tell me the amount? Present value at the rate of fifteen percent. We need that fifteen point eight six is the effective interest rate. Now, what I told? Did I ask you to calculate effect? Cal calculate the present value using effective interest rate? No. I asked you to calculate the present value using the market rate of interest without without conversion rights. See which which is given here as prevailing market rate of interest for similar debt without conversion option is 15% and hence we took 15% as a discount rate. Now, so what is the present value? Come on, tell me what is the present value? So present value is 1.15 Please confirm if it is correct or not. 30169 Is it correct guys? Come on, tell me. Now, what is general entry that I'll pass? Bank account debit. Tell me what is the amount that I have received in the bank? Tell me what is the amount that I have received in the bank? 50,000 into 180. 50,000 into 180 is how much? Nine. Uh, 
9 million, I believe. Yes, 9 million. So I'll write the full amount. This is the amount I have received in the bank. This is the amount I have received in the bank. Now further it says, just a minute. Further it says that I have issued, I have incurred some transaction cost of how much? Of how much transaction cost of 2 percentage. That becomes 180,000. So the, what is the net amount received? 88,000. Is the net amount received? 88, 20,000 is the net amount received, right? Now, what happens here? What happens here is, see, understand, understand the instrument is uh, of 99 million, okay? And I say that my equity and my financial liability is 30169, and my financial liability is 89. 69831 is my financial liability uh, is my equity and this is my financial liability this is my financial liability this is my financial liability how come 50000 into 180 uh, into 0.1 is 900000 okay Just I'll check the figures. It is three zero one six uh, nine four double zero. Okay, fine. So now, so equity will become these figures will change in that case. Thank you. Right. Uh, so it, it it will become how much three zero one six nine double zero three zero one six nine double zero. And equity will become how much? 5983 one double zero. 5983 one double zero. Okay. Now, now this is my equity and this is my financial liability. Now understand, understand this transaction cost of 180,000 has to be allocated to the equity and to financial liability in the ratio of their allocated amount in the ratio of their allocated amount so what is the amount what is the net fa net fl and net equity so understand your equity and financial liability before transaction cost is 9 9 million right and it valued at 5983100 and 3016900 now your transaction cost is your transaction cost is 180000 right now that gives you a total figure of net figure of it this much right so how will you allocate this 180000 will be allocated in the ratio of this one so how will i allocate let's let's just allocate 180000 divided by is six zero three three eight it is a uh, one one nine six six two right so now can you please tell me what is the net balance of equity net balance is five nine eight three uh one double zero minus one one nine six six two is equals to five eight six three four eight six four five eight six three 438 438 okay now it is 3016900 60338 is 2956 uh 562 is 2956562 now understand equity will be measured at its cost equity will be measured at its cost equity will be measured at its cost now for the financial liability tell me uh, tell me for the financial liability we calculated this financial liability of 301690 using the market rate of interest without conversion rights but now i allocated a transaction cost also now if there is a transaction cost i will need what i will need what i will need what i will need effective interest rate now the question clearly mentions the effective interest rate the question mentions the effective interest rate here. 
the questions mentions the effective interest rate uh, here 15.86 now what you have to do you have to amortize the financial liability using the effective interest rate using the effective interest rate now on the settlement date what will happen on the settlement date since it is compulsory convertible into equity shares what you will what will you do what will you do now uh, this financial liability will get settled over 3 years uh, over 5 years over 5 years it will get settled why because it is only interest component it is interest component the inter the equity component which remains i will issue equity shares from that and at face value at face value and if anything remains it will be transferred to securities premium it will be transferred to securities premium is that clear everyone so this is how the accounting treatment will happen over the three over the five years over the term of the uh, instrument is it clear everyone till here Now, coming to the next topic that is financial assets. Next topic is financial assets. Now, in the financial assets, understand that unlike financial liabilities, which was measured only at, unlike financial liabilities, which was measured only at uh, amortized cost method, right? Financial assets can be measured using three classification. Amortized cost method, fair value through p &L, Okay. Now, phase value in this question uh, is already given. See, uh, it is already given. Uh, see, phase value is dollar ten each. Okay. Sure, I'll do that. Don't. Do I'll do that. I'll prepare amortization table, which will help you in understanding it. Of okay, amortization table for FL. year opening financial liability finance costs and uh, then uh, payments then uh, closing financial liability so opening is how much year one two three four five right uh, opening financial liability is how much three zero one six nine double zero finance cost at the rate of what tell me at the rate of effective interest rate is 15.86 percentage okay it is not 3016 rather it is uh 2956562 sorry 2956562 okay uh now uh finance cost at the rate of 15.86 is 1.586 is uh 468 Four six eight nine one one, and you will pay how much nine hundred thousand. So closing FL will become how much two nine five six uh five six two uh plus four six eight nine one one minus nine hundred thousand is equals to two five two five four seven three. 252473. Now similarly, you have to do the accounting treatment, and at the end of fifth year, it will become zero. At the end of fifth year, it will become zero. Now, what is the on settlement date? On settlement date, what is the general entity that you will pass? You will pass here equity account uh, debit. Uh, how much? What's the value of equity? 59834586348. Now you will be issuing equity share capital at the rate of 12,500 shares multiplied by 10 right and the differential will be transferred to securities premium so it is uh, 125000 and the differential is 5863438 minus 125000 is equals to 5738438 so this is what will happen on the settlement date i hope it is clear to all of you
Now, coming to financial assets. Before we move on to financial assets, guys, can you please confirm if everything is clear so far to everyone? Is it clear, everyone? Till here so far? Wonderful, wonderful. Financial assets classification. Now, as understand that. Uh, Understand that in financial assets, in financial assets, in financial assets, unlike financial liabilities, which are measured only at amortized cost method, but financial assets are can be measured at amortized cost method, FVT, P and L, FVT, OCI, why, why, why? Because see, when I have a liability, I have an obligation to settle. I have an obligation to settle, which I cannot avoid. But in asset, I have a right to receive. I have a right to receive. Now, if I have a right, if I have a right, I can use this right in multiple ways. I can use this right in multiple ways. Now, how basically what I can do is uh, I can either uh, intend to hold it till maturity. I can uh, sell it now itself. I can hold it for trading purposes, right? Basically, there can be a multiple intent. There can be multiple intent, right? With this, I'll come to that point. I have not yet covered FL at FVT PNL. There are three cases, derivative, financial guarantee and uh, accounting mismatch. I'll be covering each of these, okay? So don't worry at all about it. We'll be covering each and everything, okay? Now, financial assets classification. So understand, unlike financial liability, which are measured at only at amortized cost method, only at amortized cost method, financial assets can be measured at amortized cost method, okay? Fair value through PNL and fair value through OCI. Fair value through OCI. Now, this notes which I have made, guys, for financial instrument chapter is self sufficient in itself, okay? It's self sufficient in itself from the conceptual perspective, covering each and everything in detail and that too in brief also, okay? Everything, detail also, brief also. Wherever details are required, in detail, wherever in brief is required, in brief, okay? Now, basically, com comes to the question how to identify whether the financial asset will be measured as per which classification is it on an ad hoc basis is it on an ad hoc basis or is it there is a some uh, provision given in the standard basis which i have to classify so standard says that i am giving you a rule basis which you have to classify uh, a financial asset as amortized cost method or fbt oci or fbt p and l now so there are two tests there are two tests one is business model test and another is contractual cash flow test one is business model test another is contractual cash flow test now, what does business model test says that the intent of the instrument holder business model test means the intent, the intent contractual cash flow test means the instrument, instrument nature, nature of the instrument. So we have to assess these two and then we can classify the instrument as a uh, at amortized cost FBT OCI or uh, FBT PNL. Now intent. If my intent is to hold till maturity, my intent can be, my intent can be to hold till maturity, my intent can be to hold till maturity or my intent can be to hold till maturity, but I can sell if better returns are available uh, or the third one, my intent can be to hold for trading purposes. Now understand intent can be three, intent can be three, hold till maturity, hold till maturity hold for trading third one is uh, hold till maturity but i can sell if better returns are available though i don't want to sell but if i get some exceptional returns if i'm getting some better returns i can sell in that scenario scenario in, in that scenario i can sell it off okay so there are three business models business model one is hold till maturity hold till maturity and sell if better returns are available and hold for trading purposes contractual cash flow test meaning thereby payment of principal and interest on specified dates payment of principal and interest on specified dates now tell me if you invest in equity instruments if you invest in equity instruments let's suppose i purchase the equity shares of infosys will i get the principal and interest on specified dates no 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 so contractual cash flow test fails contractual cash flow test fails the second and 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 no other right to the instrument holder no other right to the instrument holder what is the meaning of no other right to the instrument holder now let's suppose i invest in the convertible debentures i invest in the convertible debentures so in the debentures definitely i'll get principal and interest on a specified date but it has some other right it has a right to convert also so again contractual cash flow test 
फेल्स अगेन कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल कैश फ्लो टेस्ट फेल्स नाउ द स्टैंडर्ड से दैट इफ बिजनेस मॉडल टेस्ट ए प्लस कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल कैश फ्लो टेस्ट क्वालिफाइज इट इज अमोटाइज कॉस्ट मेथड इफ बिजनेस मॉडल टेस्ट बी एंड कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल कैश फ्लो टेस्ट क्वालिफाइज इट इज एफ वी टी ओसी आई एंड इफ एनी अदर्स एनी अदर्स इज एफ वी टी पी एंड एल एनी अदर्स इज एफ वी टी पी एंड एल ओके सो मीनिंग देयर बाय इफ योर इफ योर अंडरस्टैंड अंडरस्टैंड द लॉजिक बिहाइंड दिस इफ योर इंटेंट इज टू होल्ड टिल मच्योरिटी इफ योर इंटेंट इज टू होल्ड टिल मच्योरिटी एंड यू आर गेटिंग प्रिंसिपल एंड इंटरेस्ट ओनली ऑन स्पेसिफाइड डेट and you are getting principal and interest only on a specified date okay and there is no other right don't you think it's like a loan given it's like a loan given tell me right now this should be measured at amortized cost method now business model test b is hold it till maturity but sell if better returns are available why it is fvt oci understand If you want to hold till maturity, tell me now. Understand? If you want to hold till maturity, do, will you be bothered about the fair value changes in the market? No. But here, though your one of your intent is to hold till maturity, but you have one more intent that you can sell if better returns are available. So even though the fair value is not that, even that fair value is not that relevant for you, but still you will be checking out the fair values. That if I want to sell, if I want to sell. what is the gain or loss that i will have right and since uh, but you don't have an intent to sell under, unless other unless you are getting some uh, good returns unless you are getting some good returns so though you don't you cannot recognize the gain or loss in the p and l but still you should disclose the gain or loss in the other comprehensive income in the statement of other comprehensive income any others should be transferred to fvt p and l fvt p and l means any other means uh, if ccft fails or if the intention is to held for trading if the intention is to held for trading then in those cases you can uh, measure at fvt p and l in that cases you can measure it at fvt p and l now you have to tell me the classification for these tell me business uh, okay trade receivable the intention is to hold till maturity so business model test a cash flow test qualifies contractual cash flow test qualifies so it is amortized cost method investment in debentures i have invested in debentures okay the intention is to hold so business model test a qualifies the intention is to hold till maturity okay investment in debentures from debentures i will get what principal and interest and no other rights so contractual cash flow test passes and hence amortized cost method investment in debentures to sell if better returns are available i will sell if better returns are available now in such cases what will i do business uh, model test is b and debentures means uh, contractual cash flow test passes and hence it is f v t o c i investment in uh, convertible debentures investment in convertible debentures now when there is an investment in convertible debentures now let's suppose the, the let's suppose the intention is to hold till maturity even if the intention is to hold till maturity but there is a uh, now since it is a debenture i will get principal and interest on a specified date now since it is convertible means there is some other rights as well and contractual cash flow test fails and it will be fvtpl investment in equity shares investment in equity shares now tell me uh, investment in equity shares will it pass contractual cash flow test no it will not pass hence it will be fvt p and l is it clear everyone till here is it clear everyone till here now further so it says the standard says further that investment in uh, equity instruments is generally classified as fvt p and l this is the default classification this is the default classification this is the default classification to measure the equity instruments at fvt p and l okay but now the standard gives us an option the okay the standard gives us an option that which is irrevocable at initial recognition to classify the same as at fvt oci if it is held for long term and strategic reasons understand that if you selected fvt oci once you cannot go back to fvt p and l if you selected fvt oci once you cannot go back to 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 fvt p and l or if you selected fvt p and l once the option to select fvt oci gets closed why because the option to select fvt oci is only at the initial recognition on the date of purchase 
is only at the initial recognition. So if you select FBT P and L once, the option to select FBT OCI again gets closed. Now this is the this is the recognition principle of financial assets. Tell me guys if you have any queries so far till here. Now financial assets measurement. If uh, held for trading, then it will be always FBT P and L. Yes, Vinisa. If held for trading, it will always, always, always be FBT P and L. Now, now understand. FA at amortized cost method, uh, basically the measurement principle. We have understood the recognition principle now, the classification principle now. We will understand the measurement principle now. So, always understand that when the assets are at amortized cost method, when the asset is at amortized cost method, you will record the asset, financial asset account debit to bank and you will record at amount per paid or the or the purchase price plus the transaction cost okay plus the transaction cost subsequently you will record finance income and you will uh, record the contractual cash flows that you will receive okay now and on the settlement date you will record the bank account debit to financial asset to pnl basically okay now in fbt oci in fbt oci in fbt oci the initial recognition is same you will record finance income here also you will record finance income finance income here also but additionally additionally you will record fair value change in oci additionally you will record fair value change in oci okay again now whatever is the oci on the date of settlement gets recycled to p and l but if you measure the instrument at fvt p and l if you measure the instrument at fvt p and l then you will record the financial assets initially at amount paid or the purchase price and if you incur any transaction cost that will be transferred to pnl upfrontly that will be transferred to pnl upfrontly okay now 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 so uh, whatever is the fair value changes i will record in the pnl whatever is the coupon interest rates i receive whatever is the coupon rates i coupon cash flows i receive will be my finance income will be my finance income whatever is the fair value changes i will record in the pnl okay now Vivek has a query if uh, equity instrument uh, for equity instrument if OCI is chosen uh, is it uh, one of the equity instruments or for all equity instruments it can be for sir now understand we have to classify see the in one particular entity there can be uh, three type of equity instruments okay there can be three type of equity instruments one held for long term and strategic reasons one held for trading purposes right uh, one held for normal purposes now entity can select different policy different uh, measurement principle for different purposes equity instruments okay that should be mentioned in the policy of the accounting policy of the uh, finance uh, of the entity okay Dep by, by class by class basis you have to do okay it's not that uh, it's not that you can say uh, uh, if i have done for one i have to do it for all no no now this is a uh, question on fa measurement okay i have explained everything guys i have explained everything in this question okay uh, everything that i have explained is uh, is applicable in this question though i am not taking uh, solving this question in the, here in the class but yes i will discuss this question but i am not solving after the class you have to solve this question all of you okay now understand this on 1st january 20x1 Tokyo company bought 100,000 5% bond for 95,000, okay, incurring transaction cost of uh, 2,000. Uh, interest is issued in arrears. The bond is redeemable at a premium of 5,960 over nominal value of on this much. On 31st December 20X3, the effective interest rate is 8%. The fair value of the bond is given, required. Tokyo's business model is to hold the bond until redemption date. Okay, fine. Here the business model is given. But now tell me, CCFT passes or fails? CCFT passes or fails. CCFT passes or fails. CCFT means principal and interest on a specified date. See, interest is received in arrears. Bond is redeemed on this date, right? So basically, interest and principal is paid on a specified date, and there is no other right. Okay. So CCFT passes. CCFT passes. Now, business model test says that it is hold till redemption date. Means business model is hold till maturity plus CCFT passes means amortized cost method. Amortized cost method, amortized cost method. B, hold till redemption, but also sell them. Okay. So it is FVT OCI. Okay. Trade bonds in short term. It is FVT PNL. Right. FVT PNL. Clear everyone? So you have to do the accounting treatment for amortized cost method, FVT OCI, and FVT PNL. I will explain. Okay. Let me solve it off also. 
नाउ ईयर ओपनिंग फाइनेंशियल असेट फाइनेंस इनकम कॉन्ट्रेक्चुअल कैश फ्लोज एंड क्लोजिंग फाइनेंशियल असेट्स एंड क्लोजिंग फाइनेंशियल असेट्स ईयर इज वन टू थ्री Tell me initially, I will record my financial asset at ninety five thousand plus two thousand and ninety seven thousand. Right, finance income will be charged at eight percent. So ninety seven thousand uh, multiplied by eight percent is seven seven six zero. So what is the contractual cash flows for the three years? Tell me what is the contractual cash flows for the three years? One hundred thousand uh, multiplied by interest rate is how much? Five percent, point zero five. Is five thousand contractual cash flow is five thousand five thousand five thousand plus hundred thousand plus five nine six zero is the premium plus five nine six zero is the premium. Ah uh, no, with this, getting premium is not a right. Is not a right. It's a contractual cash flows. It's a contractual cash flows. Okay. Now. So what is the closing financial asset? Ninety-seven thousand uh, plus seven seven six zero minus five thousand is nine nine seven six zero, right? Uh, now nine nine seven six zero and multiplied by nine nine seven six zero into point zero eight is seven nine eight one. Okay, nine nine seven six zero plus seven nine eight one minus five thousand is one zero two seven four one. Okay, now one zero two seven four one multiplied by point zero eight is eight two one nine eight two one nine, and it will become nil here. Now this finance income will go to P and L. We ignore the fair value changes. So this is the answer to A. In answer to B, when it is FBT OCI, so I will compare these values with the fair value, and whatever is the gain or loss will be transferred to OCI. Now, when it is at when it is at fair value through P and L, so I will not prepare this table. I will not prepare this table. Simply whatever I am receiving, I will whatever is the fair value, I will record in the P and L. Okay, simple. I hope that is clear to all of you. I hope that is clear to all of you till here. Anyone having any queries so far? Come on, guys, tell me. Anyone having any queries so far? Now, further, financial asset issued at off market terms. Financial asset issued at off market terms. Now, what happens whenever financial asset issued at off market terms? Meaning thereby, meaning thereby, uh, let's suppose when you issue the financial asset at market rate of interest, at market rate of interest. That is normal financial asset, but when you issue the financial asset at uh, lower than market rate of interest or at higher than market rate of interest, uh, then in that case we say that, that is financial asset at off market terms. Okay, going back, we have a query here. Uh, if uh, in OCI, in OCI we prepare the amortization table. Yes, we do prepare. We do prepare. See in OCI, I told here. No, see in OCI also we have to record the finance income. Same as same as we do for same as we do for this one. So understand there is no difference in amortized cost method and FBT OCI. They are the same. They are the same. They are the same. They are the same. But additionally in FBT OCI, additionally in FBT OCI, you are also required to assess the fair value gain or loss, which will get accounted for in OCI. Is it clear, Krishi? Now, for that, so whenever we is whenever I purchase any financial asset or we issue any financial asset, uh, which is at uh, lower than or higher than market rate interest rate, it is called as financial asset at off market terms. Now, what we have to do? Example is subsidized loans. 
एग्जाम्पल इज सब्सिडाइज लोन्स ग्रांटेड बाय द एम्प्लॉयर टू इट्स एम्प्लॉय ओके सब्सिडाइज लोन्स ग्रांटेड बाय द एम्प्लॉयर टू इट्स एम्प्लॉय द पेरेंट कंपनी गिव्स अ लोन टू द सब्सिडरी कंपनी एट एट लोअर देन मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इफ द मार्केट रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज लेट सपोज टेन परसेंट पर एन एम द पेरेंट कंपनी इज गिविंग इन लोन टू सब्सिडरी कंपनी एट सिक्स परसेंट पर एन एम और माइट भी इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन ऑल्सो और माइट भी इंटरेस्ट फ्री लोन ऑल्सो इंटरेस्ट फ्री सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट वेन एवर वी टेक एनी अपार्टमेंट और एनी फ्लैट ऑन रेंट ओके और एनी ऑफिस ऑन रेंट वी हैव टू गिव द सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट राइट एंड दैट सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट इज रिफंडेबल बट इट इज नॉट इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग इट इज नॉट इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग ओके नाउ अगेन सी सिंस आई हैव गिवन द सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट टू द लैंड लॉर्ड राइट सो व्हाट हैपेंस दैट इज अ असेट फॉर अस दैट इज एन असेट फॉर अस ओके एंड सिंस आई हैव अ कॉन्ट्रैक्चुअल राइट टू रिसीव इट इज अ फाइनेंशियल असेट फॉर अस इट इज अ फाइनेंशियल असेट फॉर अस नाउ अंडरस्टैंड इवन दो इट इज अ फाइनेंशियल असेट फॉर अस बट स्टिल इट इज नॉट इंटरेस्ट बियरिंग एंड हेंस इट बिकम्स फाइनेंशियल असेट एट ऑफ मार्केट टर्म्स subsidized loans given by uh, parent to its subsidiary employer to its employee parent to its subsidiary okay now what is the accounting treatment what is the accounting treatment basically what we have to do in such cases is we have to calculate the present value of the contractual cash flows at the market rate of interest we have to calculate the present value of the contractual cash flows at the market rate of interest and whatever is the present value whatever is the present value record that as a financial asset record that as a financial asset now let's suppose i have given a security deposit of dollar 100000 to my landlord which will be refunded back to me uh, at the end of third year right so uh, let's suppose the market rate of interest is 10% and this security deposit is interest free this security deposit is interest free so what will happen i will calculate the present value of 100000 at the rate of 10% per annum let's suppose it comes to uh, Seventy five thousand, seventy five thousand. So now, but I have given an amount of hundred thousand. I have given an amount of hundred thousand, but I am recording the financial asset only to the extent of seventy five thousand. The question is, what will happen to the remaining twenty five thousand? What will happen to the remaining twenty five thousand? The standard says that if the loan that is given is for security deposit, the differential should be treated as R O U asset, R O U asset, R O U asset, and depreciate over lease term. and depreciate over lease term if the difference is pertaining to the staff loan okay then you have to recognize it as a salary cost you have to recognize it as a salary cost you have to recognize it as a employee benefit cost over the employee benefit cost okay now understand if the employer is giving the loan to the employee and there is a service condition meaning thereby you have to remain in service for this much period okay then you have to amortize this uh, amortize this difference of 25000 over that service period see that what is done if service condition exists recognize the prepaid employee benefit cost and amortize over the service period okay basically on this 25000 you record as prepaid salary cost as of now and over 3 over 3 years you amortize this uh, to salary cost amortize it to salary cost if service condition does not exist record this 25000 upfrontly to salary cost now itself now if it is if it is given by parent to subsidiary record this 25000 as investment in subsidiary company investment in subsidiary company okay is it clear everyone so now subsequently we will unwind the present value of the financial asset by recognizing finance income on the fair value at the discounting rate used and record the contractual cash flow receipts is it clear everyone Like a fine normal financial asset, because since we measure it at the since we measure at the uh, present value, it is at fair value now. It is at fair value now. It is at fair value now. Now once it is at fair value, I will record it as a normal financial asset. Basically, what was the what was the off market component? What was the off market component? We removed off. We removed off the off market component. We removed off the off market component. Okay, and we are accounting for it as a normal financial asset now. Is it clear, everyone? is it clear everyone now comes the question of reclassification of financial assets reclassification of financial assets understand reclassification is not allowed for investment in equity instruments of another entity measured at fbt oci if it is measured at fbt oci it cannot be reclassified back to fbt pnl it cannot be reclassified back to fbt pnl okay as this is an irrevocable option at initial recognition 
Now understand accounting treatment on reclassification of financial assets. Now till the date of reclassification, till the date of reclassification, you have to apply the old policy. Subsequently, you have to apply the new policy. Now why reclassification is required? Understand, understand. Though the contractual cash flow test will not change at any given point of time, but the business model test might change. Let's suppose the financial asset is for five year period. Initially, I thought that I will hold it till maturity, but uh, after two years, two years down the line, my intention changes and I want to hold it for trading purposes. Now from amortized cost, it comes directly to FBT P and L. From amortized cost, it directly comes to FBT P and L. Are you understanding this point? So the in, if the intention changes, the if the intention changes and there's an evidence supporting the change of intention, then you can reclassify the financial assets. You can reclassify the financial assets. You can reclassify the financial assets. Now understand. Now understand when you reclassify your financial assets till the date of reclassification, you will apply the old policy. After the date of reclassification, you will apply the new policy. How exactly? Let's see here. With the help of example, we'll understand this. This is the example which we have taken in our regular class also. Right? Now, so it says carrying amount of the date of reclassification is 10,000 and the fair value in the same date is 90,000 analyze. So what will we do? From amortized cost method, we have to transfer to FVTPL. From amortized cost, we have to transfer to FVTPNL. So first of all, what we'll do? First of all, what we'll do? We'll transfer it. We'll transfer it. Now tell me, it is at cost. This is at a carrying amount. Will we consider the fair value? Will we will we consider the fair value since it is at amortized cost? No. So what I will do? I will transfer financial assets at FVT P and L. I will recognize and I will de-recognize financial assets at amortized cost method. Amount will be hundred thousand. Right now plus. Now it becomes at FBT P and L. Now the um, now this is at FBT P and L. Now it is at FBT P and L. But uh, now and the fair value is ninety thousand. So don't you think I should record the fair value gain or loss? So what I will do? What I will do? I will record uh, P and L account debit to FA at FBT P L ten thousand. Right. So what happens? Uh, FA at amortized cost method gets de-recognized. FA at PNL gets recognized at hundred thousand, and we reduce the value of FA at FBT PNL at ten thousand. So net net FA at FBT PNL is recorded at net net is recorded at ninety k, ninety k net net is ninety k carrying amount. Okay. Now similarly FA at FBT OCI same entries, but here the gain or loss will be transferred to OCI, FBT PNL to OCI. So first of all, I will do the fair valuation. First of all, I will do the fair valuation and then I will transfer to amortized cost method. Guys, you will be able to pass the general entries or you want me to pass the general entries. Tell me. Let us pass it off. I don't want to take a chance here. So what happens here in amortized cost method to FBT OCI. So I will pass a similar entry here. Financial asset at FBT OCI account debit to financial asset at amortized co amortized cost method at 100000 now plus i will uh, now i have transferred the asset to fbt oci now i will record the fair value gain or loss in oci account debit 10k to financial asset at fbt oci okay now again the carrying amount is 90k the carrying amount is 90k okay now case C. Now we are transferring from FBT p &L to OCI. Now see the carrying amount is 100,000 and the fair value is 90,000. So don't you think we should do the fair valuation first? So first we should do the fair valuation. So what I will do? p and account debit to FA at FBT PL then 10k. Now this asset is at fair value now. Now I will transfer the asset to amortized cost. So basically the fair value on the date of reclassification becomes the cost of the asset. So what I will what will happen here is financial asset at amortized cost method account debit to financial asset at FVT PL at 90k. Now FVT PNL to FVT OCI. So what will happen? The same entries first of all PNL account debit 10k to FA at FVT PL. 
to FA at FBT PNL, right? So first of all, we record the record the set at its fair value. First of all, I will record the set at its fair value. Then I will transfer to FBT OCI. FA at FBT OCI account debit to FA at FBT PL 90K. Guys, tell me, is this for uh, reclassification clear to all of you? Is this for reclassification clear to all of you? Please confirm. Then I will move on to the next class reclassifications. Now, moving on to the next one. FA at FBT OCI to amortized cost method. So, first, if it is a fair value, first of all, I will make it bring it to fair value. That is OCI account debit 10K to financial asset at FVT OCI 10K. Now, I have brought my asset back to its fair value. Now, what will I do? I will transfer the asset, financial asset account debit at amortized cost method account debit to financial asset at FVTOCI 90k this is sorted but now the now 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 what happens i cannot keep oci as it is i have to transfer oci somewhere i have to transfer oci somewhere now say see the rule says that what what does the rule say if the classification is changed from oci to any other if the classification is changed from OCI to any other, OCI reserve already created should be transferred to the book value of financial assets in case new classification is amortized cost method and transfer to PNL in case new classification is FBT PNL. So what will I do? I will transfer this OCI to amortized cost method. So I will pass one more entry. I will pass one more entry here. That is FA at amortized cost method account debit 10K to OCI 10k this is the additional entry that i'll pass here okay similarly here i what i will do is first i will bring down it to fair value first i will bring it to fair value so what will happen here uh, it is uh, oci oci account debit to uh, fa at fvt oci 10k then plus i will transfer it to fbt pnl so FA at FVT PL account debit to FA at FVT to FA at FVT OCI. How much? Uh, 90K. Now this OCI, I cannot keep it as it is. I have to transfer it somewhere. So I will transfer here. I, in this case, I will transfer to P and L. I will transfer to P and L account debit to OCI 10K. So this is what you have to understand in this case. I hope it is clear to everyone till here. I hope it is clear to everyone till here. Now, moving on to the next topic that is impairment of financial assets. Now understand. So what happens here is the financial assets understand as you know that it is of two four types one is at amortized cost method one is at fbt oci one is at fbt pnl and one is at this one investment in equity instruments at fbt oci right now understand understand what is the meaning of impairment what is the meaning of impairment first i have to uh, i have to do two things in impairment i have to do two things i have to reduce the value of the asset i have to reduce the value of the asset and i have to take the impact to pnl i have to reduce the value of the asset and i have to take the impact to pnl now, now understand for assets at FBT PNL, it is already at fair value. It is already at fair value and the impact goes to PNL. So, do we need to again impair the asset? No. No. Now, for assets at FBT OCI, it is already at fair value. 
do we need to impair the set no but the impact doesn't go to p and l the impact doesn't go to p and l so what i will do will i impair the set no but the amount of impairment loss i will just transfer from oci to p and l i will transfer from oci to p and l i will not reduce the value of the set because it is already at fair value because it is already at fair value what i have to do here is i have to transfer the amount of impairment loss from oci to p and l because whenever there is an impairment of financial asset two things should happen the value of fa should reduce the impact should go to p and l now in this case in case of assets at fbt p and l the asset is already at fair value the impact goes to p and l so it is not required to be impaired for assets at fbt oci the value of assets is already at fair value uh, but the impact doesn't go to p and l so i will not impair the asset but i will transfer the amount of impairment loss from oci to p and l okay now for investment in equity instruments that of another entity uh, or at fbt oci now it is if it is at fbt oci it is already at fair value do i need to reduce the value of the assets no but the impact doesn't go to p and l so what i have to do i have to transfer from oci to p and l but is that allowed is that allowed is that allowed to transfer from oci to p and l in this case is it allowed in this case no hence i will not hence i will not impair this asset also hence i will not impair this asset also i will not impair this i will not impair this i will only impair these two assets i will only impair this sorry i will only impair this and this is it clear now how exactly if the assets as that amortized cost method i will reduce the value of the assets and i will record expense in the p and l see uh, loss allowance account debit p and l expense and provision for loss allowance which will be adjusted with the uh, as financial assets in the sofp in the statement of financial position okay now if it is assets at fbt oci except for investments in equity instruments at fbt oci except except okay that is not included here okay so i will transfer just from oci to p and l loss allowance account debit p and l account debit to oci loss allowance account debit p and l to oci clear everyone now how to measure so first of all i have to assess first of all i have to assess whether it is a 12 month ecl or a lifetime ecl understand how will we assess that if the asset is credit impaired or there is a significant credit risk if there is the asset is credit impaired or there is a significant credit risk then we say then we say in that case it is a uh, it is we have to create lifetime ecl otherwise i have to create 12 month ecl otherwise i have to create 12 month ecl now expected i will calculate what expected credit losses how to measure see this is the first uh, i have to understand i have to measure a uh, 12 month ecl or i have to calculate lifetime ecl first of all i have to do this one what is the meaning of this what is the meaning of this lifetime ecl means lifetime ecl means i have i am actually expecting i am actually expecting that some of the money will not be received 12 month ecl means though i cannot see that i will any of the any of the money will not be received but still as part of the company's policy i am making a provision of, for bad and doubtful debts i am just making a provision for bad and doubtful debts i am just making a provision for it i am just making a provision for it in the worst case scenario if it is not received i am just making a provision for it now comes the question how to measure the how to measure the value of to lifetime ecl and how to measure the value of 12 month ecl now how to calculate so that will be calculated with using the present value of the expected future cash flows that will not be realized now 12 month ecl will be equals to a uh, 12 month ecl will be equals to uh, ecl that i calculated in the step number 2 step number 2 step number 2 okay ecl that i calculated in step number 2 that is present value of the defaults that uh, present value of the amount that will not be received present value of the amount that will not be realized okay now probability of default within next 12 months multiply by the probability of default within the next 12 months but in lifetime ecl you will multiply it by 100% and not uh, not the probability but in lifetime ecl you will multiply it by 100% is that clear everyone is that clear everyone come on guys tell me now this is a question So what does it say that company has a portfolio of loan assets at amortized cost method? All assets have an effective interest rate of seven point five percent per annum. The portfolio was initially recognized at eight hundred and forty thousand. Okay, on first April two zero x one, the entity in on this date entity estimates the present value of the future defaults of now present value of default 
is 100,000, is 100,000, is 100,000, okay? Now, with probability of default as 5%. Now, is the question saying that there is a significant risk here? Is the question saying that on this date, there is a significant risk? No. And the probability of default is 5%. So, what is my 12-month ECL? What is my 12-month ECL? My 12-month ECL is 5,000. So, how will I record the asset? How will I record the asset? So basically, what will uh, what will happen? I will record this as like this uh, loss allowance account debit to provision for loss allowance five thousand five thousand. Okay. Now this will get adjusted with FA. in sofp in sofp okay and this will be transferred where to p and l now tell me here what is the effective interest rate 7.5 percentage so what is the finance income here what is the finance income here 840000 multiplied by 7.5 percentage which is equals to 63000 Right, so the balance becomes how much? 840 plus 63 is 903,000. Right, now what happens here? Again, on 31st March 2022, the credit uh, risk increases significantly. Credit risk increase significantly means lifetime ECL. Means lifetime ECL. Means lifetime ECL. Right, now if it is lifetime ECL, so what is the present value of the default? What is the present value of default? So present value of the default, if it was 100,000 here, if I unwind it, it will become how much? 107500, right? Now, if it is lifetime ECL, will I multiply with probability or 100%? It will, I will multiply with 100%. It will become how much? 107500, right? So what is the value of the asset? 903,000. 903,000 minus 107500. That is 795500. Right now, subsequently, subsequently, if I have to calculate finance income, subsequently, if I have to calculate finance income, I will calculate on, I will calculate on seven nine double five double zero. Now, understand what the standard says that on, I will write here, calculation of finance income. Calculation of finance income. Okay, if it was twelve month ECL, if it was twelve month ECL, I will calculate finance income on gross assets. Okay, if it is lifetime ECL, if it is lifetime ECL, I will calculate finance income on net assets, but prospectively, 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 not retrospectively, prospectively, meaning thereby if here I have calculated lifetime ECL, here I have calculated lifetime ECL. So going forward, I will calculate finance income on a net basis. I hope that is clear to all of you. Come on guys, tell me. De-recognition of financial assets, understand. So what happens, uh, we de-recognize the financial assets when the right to contractual cash flow expires, but basically when the cash flow gets uh, realized or when we wave off our right to receive the cash flow or the ca right to cash flow are transferred. When the right to cash flow is transferred, when the right to cash flow is transferred, I have to see whether the right is transferred along with the risk. Gross assets uh, assets means uh, okay. See, here we calculated a uh, twelve month ECL, right? Here we calculate twelve month ECL. Now, if I am calculating twelve month ECL, I calculated a uh, finance income on gross assets. See, I didn't adjust 12 month ECL here. Okay, I didn't adjust the amount of ECL here. I didn't adjust the amount of ECL when calculating the finance income. But now subsequently, if I calculate finance income here, you know how, how I will calculate? I will calculate 7.5% of 795500. This is how I will calculate going forward. Clear with this? Huh?
इज इट क्लियर now right to cash flow transferred whenever we are transferring the right to cash flow it has to be transferred along with the risk and the control and the risk reward or the control okay the control or substantially risk and reward it has to be transferred with the substantial risk or rewards now if it is transferred with substantial risk and reward i can derecognize fa now two instances if i transfer with recourse transfer with recourse means transfer with recourse means the let's suppose i have sold my financial asset to some other party okay now uh, transfer with recourse means uh, the the party to whom i have transferred my financial asset okay if that party is unable to realize the financial asset then he will come to me he will come to me he will come to me means the risk is still with me even though i have transferred the financial asset even though i have transferred the financial asset but still the risk is with me still the risk is with me uh, these type of assets cannot in these cases we cannot de recognize financial assets but now but now uh, non recourse arrangement means what non recourse arrangement means what if uh, now when i sold the financial assets whether that party is able to realize or not able to realize i am not bothered about it at all okay in that case it says transfer with non recourse arrangement and hence we can de recognize the financial asset in this in such cases okay that is we transfer the financial asset with the substantial risk or rewards or along with the control is it clear everyone now treasury shares what is the meaning of treasury shares treasury shares means uh, we are uh, we are purchasing our own shares when we purchase our own shares can i record that is an investment no i have to deduct that from the equity that's treasury shares what is the meaning of offsetting of fa and fl can we offset fa and fl we can offset fa and fl only if the two conditions are satisfied that is there is a legally enforceable right to set off and the entity intends to set off on a net basis means i have a right i have a right to set off i have a right to set off i have a right to set off and i intend to settle on a net basis okay so then i can offset comes the question of financial guarantee come on guys tell me if everything is clear till here so far now this financial guarantee is a special case of financial liability at fvtpl please confirm if everything is clear to till here so far everyone okay wonderful thank you now what happens what is the meaning of financial guarantee basically now let, let's suppose uh, the subsidiary company when the subsidiary company goes to take a loan from the bank goes to take a loan from the bank the bank charges higher interest rate might be let's suppose might be subsidiary company is a startup company might be subsidiary company is a startup company let's suppose let's suppose tata company uh, has a subsidiary which is called as let's suppose a uh, big basket big basket is a startup big basket is a startup right now when big basket goes to sbi for taking a loan sbi will say i will charge you an interest rate of 18% per annum i will charge you an interest rate of 18% per annum i will charge you an interest rate of 18% per annum okay now what happens here what happens here is uh, why why in uh, sbi charging such a higher interest rate because uh, since it is a startup there is a high risk of repayment okay it, it might be the case that the startup company might not be able to repay the funds back to sbi now so that's why they are charging higher interest rate now what what happens tata comes and gives the guarantee to sbi that if big basket is unable to repay the funds i will repay the fund i will repay the funds back okay now what happens due to this financial guarantee given by tata on behalf of the subsidiary company so what happens uh, sbi reduces the interest rate to 12% per annum that is a market interest rate market interest rate so what happens due to this financial guarantee the subsidiary company has a benefit has a benefit of savings of interest right how will we measure so standard says that standard says that we have to measure this financial guarantee at its fair value we have to measure the financial guarantee at its fair value and whatever is the fair value changes between two dates two reporting dates we have to transfer it to p and l the question comes up how to measure the present value how to measure the fair value how to measure the fair value now initially 
on the date when I am giving the financial guarantee, tell me on the date when I am giving the financial guarantee, will there be any risk of a, a, a repayment? Tell me when Tata gives the financial guarantee. Let's suppose Tata has given the financial guarantee today. Definitely, when the Tata gives the financial guarantee, Tata is certain that yes, my subsidiary will repay the funds back. Right? So, is there any chance of loss? No, zero. So, what will happen? I will measure, I will measure this uh, financial guarantee at the present value of the savings to big basket. So, now what is the savings to big basket? Savings of 6% interest every year. Savings of 6% interest. So, now I have to calculate the present value of the savings. Present value of the savings at the market rate of interest. And this value, how will I record? Tata will record. Tata holding company in the books of holding company. Tata will record at investment in subsidiary account debit to uh, financial guarantee. Okay. Now, at each reporting date, the revised fair value will be higher of except expected bad debts or the remaining uh, cash flows, the present value of the remaining cash flows higher, higher. Why higher? Why higher? Let's suppose, let's suppose the present value of the remaining cash flows is, let's suppose, dollar $5,000. Present value of the remaining cash flows is let's suppose 5,000. 5, now, but I expect that the big basket will not be able to repay the funds back to the SBI amounting to dollar 20,000. Tell me what is my obligation? Tell me what is my obligation? 5,000 or 20,000? My obligation is 20,000. Why? Because I have to pay this 20,000 back to SBI. I will have to pay this to SBI because my subsidiary big basket will not be able to repay it back to SBI. So it is my obligation now because I have given a financial guarantee to the bank that if big basket is unable to repay, I will repay. So that's the reason why I say higher off. Now let's suppose, let's suppose this amount, this amount, I, ex I expect that the bad debt will be dollar 2000. I expect my bad debt is 2000. So again, it is 5000. So higher of higher of expected bad debts or the present value of the savings is what I have to record my financial guarantee as. I, have, I hope it is clear. Now, the difference between the fair value of the two reporting debts will be accounted for in the P and L as gain or loss, as gain or loss. This is financial guarantee. Now comes the derivative contract. Now comes the derivative contract. Guys, come on, tell me, is it clear everyone till here? Is it clear everyone till here? Derivative, embedded derivative and hedge accounting. That's what is left. We'll wrap it, uh, wrap it up within uh, 20 minutes. Come on, guys, tell me. Derivative, embedded derivative and hedge accounting is left. Come on, guys, tell me. And these are important topics. Derivative. What is the meaning of derivative? Three features. What is the three features of derivative contract? Tell me, guys, the three features are it requires low or nil initial investment. It requires low or nil initial investment. It is to be settled at a future date and it derives its value from the underlying. It derives its value from the underlying and it is tied to be measured at FVTPL. Derivative can be derivative liability or it can be derivative asset. And we have already studied the meaning of derivative asset and derivative liability. We have already studied the meaning of derivative asset and derivative liability, right? See here. We have studied the meaning of derivative asset. See, this is the meaning of derivative asset. Contractual right to receive cash or any other financial asset in a potentially favorable condition. It is called as derivative asset. It is called as derivative asset, right? And co uh, contractual obligation to deliver cash or any other financial asset in a potentially unfavorable condition is called as derivative liability. Basically, if it is my uh, if it is a favorable condition, it's an asset. If it's an unfavorable condition, it's a liability. Now, so how it will measure at F, it will be measured at F, B, T, P, and L. Now, what should be the accounting treatment? The, these contracts should be classified at F, B, T, P, and L. Any transaction cost incurred is recognized in P and L. Is recognized in P and L. Now, understand the general entry on the date of contract on the contract date. On contract date, on contract date, 
ओके ऑन ईच रिपोर्टिंग डेट्स ऑन ईच रिपोर्टिंग डेट्स एंड ऑन द डेट ऑफ सेटलमेंट on a settlement date so on contract date i will pass no entry why because nil investment or if i am making some low investments i will record derivative set account debit to bank whatever investment i have made on reporting date i will see if it is a favorable situation then derivative asset if it is a unfavorable situation then derivative liability through p and l see whether derivative asset or derivative liability i am recording it through p and l through p and l through p and l right now on the settlement date i will uh, if it is a derivative asset i will recover the derivative asset if it's a derivative liability i will pay off the derivative liability that's all that's all is it clear everyone is it clear everyone is it clear everyone come on guys tell me now embedded derivatives what is the meaning of embedded derivatives what is the meaning of embedded derivative so basically what happens embedded derivatives is a derivative where there is a embedded uh, where there is a derivative component embedded in the host contract where there is a derivative component embedded in the host contract now in such cases what we have to do we have to split the contract into two parts derivative contract and host contract derivative contract and host contract now the derivative contract derivative contract uh now host contract and derivative contract the uh, host contract will be accounted as per the applicable ias or ifrs and derivative contract will be uh, accounted for as per ifrs 9 that is derivative accounting will do okay that is this accounting this accounting will do and uh, host contract i will account, continue to account as per the respective standard okay now but there are certain situations where we are not required to separate the host contract and derivative contract okay see what i'm trying to say in general situations whenever we see that there is a derivative component embedded in the host contract whenever we see there is a embedded derivative component embedded in the host contract we separate it off but there are some cases where the separation is not uh, not required where the separation is not required they are if the derivative component is insignificant if the derivative component is insignificant or immaterial the standard says that better do not uh, better do not uh, segregate it because the cost of segregating will be higher than the benefits from segregation so do not segregate it do not separate it off okay now uh, if the if they are closely related in the normal business practice what is the meaning of this one let's suppose let's suppose uh, uh we uh, we sell classes to international students also we sell classes to international students also now when i sell uh, our classes to international students what happens uh they pay the fees upfrontly to us they pay the fees we deliver the class we deliver the class they pay the fees it happens at the same moment it happens at the same moment it happens at the same moment now uh, is there any risk is there any risk is there any derivative component involved no but now let's suppose any particular instrument uh, student says that any particular student says that sir i'll pay the fees after 2 months i will pay the fees after 2 months now in that case what will happen in that case what will happen so if the student says that i will pay the fees after 2 months i will pay the fees after 2 months now and that student is a foreign student so don't you think i will have a risk of forex forex increasing or decreasing so right now one host contract is the sale of classes and the derivative contract is a forex gain or loss derivative contract is a forex gain or loss right so now uh, is it my normal practice to give two months period to, to the students for paying the fees no so it's not so i have to segregate it off but now let's suppose it's my normal practice itself it's my normal practice itself to uh, to give the students a, uh, a bandwidth of two months to pay the fees right so in that case it's a normal business they are closely related and hence i am not required to separate it off okay now purchase or sale of goods uh, in foreign currency so what happens the host contract is the purchase or sale i will record the forward rate and the foreign currency is a derivative contract which i will record the derivative accounting i'll apply okay now in financial instrument chapter in financial instrument chapter the, we use multiple rates okay some sometimes uh, market rate sometimes effective interest rate sometimes coupon rate sometimes discounting rate sometimes this rate that rate student gets confused sir where i have to use which rate please give me a crux of it i am here to give you the crux if it is a normal financial liability which rate you will use to record finance cost if it is a normal financial liability which rate will you use to record finance cost you will record finance cost at coupon rate 
you will record finance costs at coupon rate if it is a financial liability with transaction cost then you will record finance costs at effective interest rate if it is a compound financial instrument you will use a market rate of similar instruments without conversion rights without conversion rights now if it is a compound a cfi with financial liability component same rate if it is a cfi compound financial instrument with financial financial liability component but having transaction cost involved effective interest rate okay now financial asset amortized cost method effective interest rate financial asset off market terms market rate of interest if it is financial guarantee again market rate of interest now if it is financial set or, or at ecl then effective interest rate so this is what happens for a uh, discounting rate tell me guys is it clear everyone is it clear everyone we need uh, deepika krishi sunny with uh, vidisha come on guys all of you tell me now executory contracts executory contracts now what is the meaning of executory contracts understand executory contract means contract to buy or sell non financial items to buy or sell non financial items okay to buy or sell non financial items now this is if this is for self usage if this is for self usage out of scope out of scope and will be covered under the respective standard if i have to contract to buy a property plan and equipment it will be covered under is 16 okay if it is a contract to buy you can buy or sell uh, uh, goods or services contract to sell goods or services it will be covered under uh, you can say ifrs 15 okay so it's for the respective standards but it's a contract to buy or sell non financial items but i have to set it on net basis then i have to apply derivative accounting now comes the question now comes the question uh, how to decide how to decide whether uh, whether it is an uh, self usage or a uh, net basis how to decide whether it is a self basis or net basis now on the basis of past practices or what is what is the intention of the entity on the basis of past practices or what is the intention of the entity clear everyone now uh, now uh, vinit has a query uh, that uh, if the financial assets are, are at amortized cost method then how come eir understand amortized cost method whether for financial assets or financial liabilities is the same no is the same amortized cost method for financial asset or financial liability it is the same the only difference is there i record a liability here i record an asset there i record a finance cost here i record a finance income right so in both the cases i have to unwind in both the cases i have to unwind so if whatever is the transaction cost whatever is the transaction cost i have to factor it i have to factor this transaction cost i have to factor this transaction cost uh, in the coupon rate in the coupon rate or the rate of interest and arrive at the effective interest rate now comes the h accounting very simple very simple h accounting is very simple come on guys tell me is it clear everyone uh, we will take a uh, 10 more minutes to wrap up this session h accounting what is the meaning of h what is the meaning of h h basically is a method is a method of managing the risks okay method of managing the risk method of managing the risk okay now what happens how come managing the risk see understand whenever we are doing the business definitely we have some risk we have some risk now what happens we enter into some uh, contract we enter into some contract and what happens in this contract whenever i have a gain in this i will have a loss in this and whenever i have a loss in this contract i will have a gain in this so basically i will always be at par i will always be at par i will always be at par there will be no gain low no loss situation no gain no loss situation there will be no gain no loss situation okay this is called as a hedging method of managing risk by designating certain by designating certain instruments as hedge instruments by designating certain instruments as hedge instruments
in a way in such a way that gain or loss on the hedge item hedge item is the item on which i have a risk item on which i have a risk okay the gain or loss on the hedge item is offset is offset by loss or gain on the hedge instrument meaning thereby if i have a gain here i will have a loss here if i have a loss here i will have a gain here means i will always be in a no gain no loss situation no gain no loss situation okay i am hedging the risks i am hedging my risks okay now what is the meaning of hedge item hedge item can be of three types recognized assets and liabilities firm commitment and highly probable forecast transaction okay now what is the meaning of recognized assets and liabilities the assets or liabilities which is already recognized in the financial statements to to give an example inventory property plan and equipment or investment properties investment in equity shares okay or firm commitment firm commitment can be uh, i am a i have, though it is not recognized in my financial statements but i have entered into a contract and this contract is uh, this contract is uh, non cancelable this contract is non cancelable basically i cannot cancel this contract i am bound to execute this contract what is the meaning of highly probable forecast transaction it is not recorded in the financial statements asset these are not recorded in the financial statements as of now though and neither it is a neither there is a non cancelable contract neither there is a non cancelable contract but but what happens here is i am highly probable that i will enter into the contract though i have not entered into contract as of now but i am highly probable that i will enter into the contract i will enter into the contract okay now i am taking i am hedging my risk for that also i am hedging my risk for that also okay so i can hedge my risks i can hedge my risks for three things my recognized assets and liabilities my contract that i have already entered but uh, there is no assets and liabilities in my financial statement pertaining to that i have not entered the contract but i will enter the contract in the future so i think that i might have a risk in that so i am hedging the risk for that also so there are three assets three types of hedge item that can exist now hedge instrument to manage the risks in the hedge item to manage the risks in the hedge item i enter into these type of hedge instrument hedge instrument can be derivative instrument it can be call option it can be put option it can be forwards it can be uh, you can say futures uh, non derivative can be investment in equity instruments okay so this is a, these are the hedge instruments now hedge conditions now understand understand i can apply this hedge accounting i can apply this hedge accounting only if i satisfy this hedge condition only if i satisfy these hedge conditions if i don't satisfy the hedge condition i will not be able to i will not be able to apply the hedge accounting i will not be able to apply the hedge accounting so i have to i have to i have to understand that uh, basically uh, to apply hedge accounting to apply hedge accounting i have to satisfy these hedge conditions what are the hedge conditions the hedge item should be one of these the hedge item should be one of these and not anyone and not anything else the hedge item should be one of these okay it should be effective hedge only it should be effective hedge what is the meaning of effective hedge meaning thereby this should be close economic relationship i will let me explain that let me explain that my hedge item let's suppose i have purchased the investment in uh, infosys i have purchased the equity shares of infosys and now now i uh, i my risk is the value of this uh, investment might go down the value of this investment might go down the value of this investment might go down so what i have what i do is i enter into a put option i enter into a put option i enter into a put option now what happens in the put option if the risk goes down if the risk goes down i will have a loss in investment but i will have a gain in the put option right so it they will get offset they will get offset they will get offset right this is called close economic relationship both of them are closely linked now what is the meaning of let me give another example i have purchased the equity shares of reliance i have purchased the equity shares of reliance okay now now uh, i am uh, worrying i i have i am worrying that <coughs> the uh, okay or i let me give you another example i am i have purchased the equity shares of tata steel i have purchased the equity shares of tata steel and now i am worrying that the price of tata steel might decrease i am worrying that the price of tata steel might decrease so for that what i do, what i do is 
I purchase a, I, I enter into contract to purchase plastic in the future. To purchase plastic in the future, because uh, what I what I have noticed, what I have noticed, when the price of the equity uh, in Tata Motors increases, what when the price of the Tata Motors increases, the price of the plastic decreases. Okay, is there any relationship between them? Is there any relationship between them? No, no, no. So that cannot be designated as a hedge instrument. That cannot be designated as a hedge instrument. There should be a close economic relationship. There should be a close economic relationship. Now, hedge ratio should be 1 is to 1. What is the meaning of hedge 1 is to 1? Mean, means if one goes up, one should go down. If one goes down, the other one should go up. Okay. If there is a gain in one, loss in another. If there is a loss in one, gain in another. Now, the, there should be no credit risk on the hedge instrument. No credit risk on hedge instrument means, understand. I have entered into this hedge instrument. I have entered into this hedge instrument to uh, manage my risk. If I will have a risk in this hedge instrument itself, is there any sense to apply hedge accounting? If there is a risk in this hedge instrument itself, is there any uh, sense in applying the hedge accounting? No. So, standard says that there should be no risk on the hedge instrument. No credit risk on the hedge instrument. Okay. If there is a gain in the hedge instrument, I should be able to realize that gain. Okay. And hedge documentation should exist. What is the meaning of hedge documentation? What is the meaning of hedge documentation? Hedge documentation means the risk management policy. What are the risks of the company? How the company manages the risk? Okay. In this case, how the company is managing the risk? So, all the details about the hedge instrument, hedge uh, risk, all the instru uh, hedge instrument, everything. Okay. Should be mentioned in the hedge document. If all these three exist, then only I will be able to apply the hedge accounting. Then only I will be able to apply the hedge accounting. Now, the hedge relationships are of two types. One is fair value hedge and another is cash flow hedge. One is fair value hedge and another is cash flow hedge. Now, what is the meaning of fair value hedge? Fair value hedge means I have a risk of decline in the fair value. I have a risk of decline in the fair value. Cash flow means I have a risk of change of the cash flows. I have a risk of the change of the cash flows. For example, I have taken a loan from the foreign bank. I have to pay the interest and I have to repay the principal, right? So, I, I expect that these cash flows might change. These cash flows might change. There is a risk. I have an investment in equity shares. I am worrying that the fair value might decrease. There's a fair value hedge. So for that, I have to enter into fair value hedge. For the loan, they have to enter into cash flow hedge. Now, how the accounting treatment goes by for fair value hedge? For fair value hedge, how the accounting treatment goes by? So on the contract date, there will be no treatment or, or, or I can write here hedge instrument account debit to bank. If I have given, if I have incurred any amount, if I incurred any amount, if I have incurred any amount, on each reporting date, I will have to measure the hedge instrument. I will have to remeasure the hedge instrument. Whatever is the gain or loss, listen to me carefully. I have to remeasure the hedge instrument. I have to remeasure the hedge instrument. Whatever is the gain or loss on hedge instrument, I have to transfer it to the hedge item. I have to transfer it to hedge item. I have to transfer it to hedge item and remeasure the hedge item as per the applicable standards. Remeasure the hedge item as per the applicable standards. Now, on the settlement date, realize the hedge instrument. Let us discuss with the help of an example. Again, this is an example which I consider in my uh, regular class I have taken up. Now, let us discuss this example. So, I have entered into contract on 1st January contract date. Okay, 31st March is the reporting date and 30th June is the settlement date. Okay, now what is the uh, what is happens here? Uh, ABC Limited has an inventory of 1 million at cost. ABC Limited has an inventory of 1 million at cost. Okay, on 1st January 2021. So, cost of inventory is 1 million. Okay, whose fair value is 1.2 million. Fair value is 1.2 million. Okay, now ABC Limited is worried about the decline in the fair value of the inventory. Hence, ABC Limited enters into a derivative contract to sell the inventory at 1.18 million. Now, the ABC Limited enters into a contract, enters into a contract, just a minute, enters into a contract to sell, okay, at, to sell at what? Dollar 1.18 million, dollar 1.18 million on 30th of June. This is the, this is the hedge. This is the hedge instrument. This is the hedge instrument. This is the hedge instrument. Okay. I was having a risk in the decline in the fair value. So I entered into hedge instrument. Now the question says that the fair value of the inventory on this date is dollar 
1.15 million and the fair value of the inventory on this date is dollar 0.9 million okay it was sold at fair value now tell me on this date when i intend to contract will i pass any entry no no entry i will pass entry with this pen no entry now on this date tell me what happens i will have a gain or i will have a loss tell me i will have a gain or i will have a loss tell me tell me guys i have a gain or i have a loss now i intend to contract to sell at i intend to contract to sell at 1.18 and now the price decreases to 1.15 i have a gain i have a gain i am happy that i intend to contract to sell at a higher rate so gain is gain is uh, 0.03 million 0.03 million on hedge instrument which i will transfer to which i will transfer to which i will transfer to hedged item so what i will do hedge instrument hedge instrument account debit and hedge item is inventory 0.03 million okay now tell me what is the value of inventory what is the value of inventory now what is the value of inventory it was it used to be 1 million minus 0.03 million so what is the value now 1 minus 0.03 is 0.97 million 0.97 million and now what is the fair value 1.15 million now as per ias 2 measure requires us to measure at lower of cost or net realizable value cost or net realizable value so i will measure it at 0.97 million i will measure at 0.97 million right now comes the settlement date again tell me i have a gain or loss i have a gain or loss I have a gain. What is the net gain? From uh, I intend to contract to sell at 1.18, but the price reduces to 0 0.09. Price reduces to 0 0.09 is 1.09 is the gain. But I have already recorded a gain of 0 0.03. So what is the net gain now? 1.06 is the net gain now. So I will record hedge instrument again. Hedge instrument account debit to uh, inventory. To inventory how much 1.06 now with this what is the value of my inventory what is the value of my inventory tell me what is the value of my inventory 0 0.97 minus 1.06 is just a minute one18 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.28 it's not 1.09 sorry guys it's 0 0.28 1.18 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.23 is 0 0.25 is 0.25 is 0.25 that's value of my inventory is how much uh, 0. Point, 0. 0.97 minus 0. 0.25 is equals to 0. 0.72 0. 0.72 why are we netting the gain with this i understand no See, tell me total gain from here to here is how much 1.0.28 but i have already recorded a gain of 0 0.03 right i have already recorded a gain of 0 0.03 so will i record it again if i have already recognized a gain of 0 0.03 will i recognize it again no right so i will recognize the differential part i will recognize the differential part right so it is 0 0.25 so i will record this in the inventory now understand what will happen I will record my sales. I will record my sale at what value? Tell me. I will record my sale at what value? Now understand. Even though, even though, even though, even though, tell me, guys, come on. I will record the sale at. I will record my sale at zero point nine zero at its current value. At its current value. At its current value. And I will. And I will. And I will. I record my cost of sales at 0 0.72 what will happen i will recognize my profit i will recognize my profit i will uh, recognize my profit at how much 0 0.9 minus 0 0.72 is 0 0.18 million right now understand let me explain how hedge instrument helps you how a hedge instrument helps you 
इफ नो हेचिंग डन इफ नो हेच डन इफ नो हेच वुड हैव बीन डन सो वट वुड हैव एपेंड यूर टेलमी यू वुड हैव रिकोगनाइज योर सेल्स एट हाउ मच जीरो पॉइंट नाइन जीरो एंड यू रिकोगनाइज योर कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स एट वन मिलियन एंड योर नेट लॉस वुड हैव बीन हाउ मच जीरो पॉइंट वन मिलियन जीरो पॉइंट वन मिलियन शुड बी योर लॉस शुड बी योर लॉस शुड बी योर लॉस नाउ सिंस यू हैव डन द हेजिंग यू आर इन अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट वन एट मिलियन नाउ नाउ टेल मी नाउ टेल मी वन थिंग नाउ टेल मी वन थिंग वॉट इज द डिफरेंशियल वॉट इज द डिफरेंशियल वॉट इज द डिफरेंशियल जीरो पॉइंट टू एट जीरो पॉइंट टू एट राइट जीरो पॉइंट टू एट now you know who will give the 0.28 hedge instrument how come hedge instrument we recognize that hedge instrument we recognize that 0.03 and 0.25 can you please do the total can you please do the total it's 0.28 so the differential this loss is coming as a gain from the hedge instrument this loss is coming as a gain from the hedge instrument this is how hedging helps is it clear everyone come on guys tell me is it clear everyone how do uh, how we de recognize the hedge entry how we do de recognize why do we need to de recognize the entry hedge entry okay if you want to just hedge instrument so i will just do a here a entry that is bank account debit i will realize this hedge, hedge instrument bank account debit to hedge instrument 0.28 million i will realize this virisa what i am trying to explain is basically uh, whatever is the loss on the hedge item whatever is the loss on hedge item that comes as a gain on the hedge instrument that comes as a gain on the hedge instrument do we sell it to realize again yes we sold it see uh, the question says no Inventory was sold on 30th June at the then fair value. Okay, basically what is happening is again. Uh, basically what is happening here is in this uh, hedge versus no hedge condition, there is a gain of 0.28. There is a gain of 0.28, which gets realized from the hedge instrument, which gets realized from the hedge instrument. Clear, everyone? Now. Coming to cash flow hedge. Coming to cash flow hedge. Cash flow hedge is very simple. Cash flow is very simple. Uh, on contract date, no entry. On reporting date, we remeasure the hedge instrument. And whatever is the gain or loss on remeasure, whatever is the gain or loss on remeasurement of the hedge instrument, we record in OCI. We we park in the OCI. We keep parking the gain or loss on hedge instrument in OCI. We keep parking in OCI. We keep parking in OCI. And when we realize the uh when on the settlement date on the settlement date whatever is re record, recorded in oci whatever is recorded in oci gets recycled to spl gets recycled to spl gets recycled to spl statement of profit or loss okay that's the accounting statement for cash flow hedge and this completes our discussion on financial instruments i hope uh, this discussion and this revision session would have uh, helped you guys if uh, anyone has any queries guys come on tell me anyone having any queries here thanks everyone thanks dipika vineet vidisha krishi uh, sami all of you thanks everyone bye bye have a happy weekend the whatever is left Thank you bye bye uh